when we have been in a relationship with a narcissist, our brain has been altered, possibly even physically injured by the manipulative behaviors um, that that they purvey to access what they need from us, a.k.a. narcissistic supply. They throw salt on our wounds that are already with, they are already in us with their despicable behaviors and they leave us feeling like we have lost our mind. We feel exhausted and depleted and like an empty shell and they have us in a constant state of fight or flight, this constant stress response from the day that you met your narcissist. And this ultimately messes with the brain. The neuroscience of narcissistic re abuse recovery reveals fascinating research about how you can literally repair your injured brain and Something called brain spotting can really help to speed up the process. But first, it is very important to understand how trauma impacts the brain in the first place. And this information can help you understand the true magnitude of this very dangerous kind of abuse. So the brain stem, this is the oldest part of the brain, the part that controls our primary responses for survival, like breathing, sleeping, and hunger, the limbic system, the part that developed after the brainstem, which includes both the um, amygdala, which is the stress response or the fight or flight, uh, fear and memory, and the hippocampus, which regulates emotion, motivation, learning, and memory, and is on the back or the posterior of the brain or part of the limbic lobe and the anterior is part of the amygdala. The prefrontal cortex, the newest part of the brain associated with executive functioning, i.e. planning, decision-making, short-term memory, emotions, thoughts, and behaviors. We rely on the oldest part of our brain for survival. For example, as babies, we are born with a fully developed brainstem and our primal need to eat and sleep and cry is innate. The other parts of our brain require more time to fully mature and develop. And in fact, we don't develop our prefrontal cortex until our mid-20s. So how does narcissistic abuse affect our and um, impact our amygdala as the amygdala helps with our emotional regulation memory and it detects fear and when we talk about the classic fight or flight freeze or fawn stress response we're referring to the amygdala in action and researchers are still learning about how humans interpret fear but studies show that trauma can profoundly impact this process if you have experienced narcissistic abuse, you know exactly how dangerous it feels both consciously and unconsciously from beginning to end. And you know the feelings of anxiety, of dread, of uncertainty, and they're, they're there unconsciously. And when that feeling, your stomach dropping when your partner walks in the door and you also recognize the painful feelings of hopelessness and helplessness and you feel your body that is like it's strangely trying to warn you or run away or become ready to fight or freeze in place or fawn i.e revert to people pleasing to diffuse conflict and reestablish a sense of safety so when we are constantly subject to toxic behaviors from our partner, we are in a constant state of fight or flight, freeze or fawn. And this is over time because we've become so attuned to danger and the threat to our basic human survival. This often continues on after the relationship has ended. And when we are constantly subject to toxic behaviors from our partner or ex partner we are in a con like i said a constant state of fight or flight and because of this um everyone and everything may still trigger a stress and a fear response and we've become 
so attuned to threats all around us, like I said, to our basic sense of safety and security. So this is why many of us as victims of narcissistic abuse struggle with ongoing trust issues, ruminating in obsessive thoughts, body pain, panic attacks, and dread attacks, disassociation and depersonalization, recurring uh, flashbacks, withdrawal from friends and family, substance abuse and disordered eating. So how does narcissistic abuse impact our hippocampus? Like I said, this area of the brain is associated with learning and memory, and it is complex as it is fragile and damage to the hippocampus can cause serious psychological distress. The hippocampus supports primal desires like hunger, sex, mood, pleasure, and pain. In addition to learning and memory, the hippocampus also supports regulating spatial navigation, emotional behavior, motor behavior, and research shows that trauma can physically alter the hippocampus. Those with complex PTSD have a reduction in the size of their hippocampus, and this can impact memory and recall. Hence, you may be unable to remember certain events that happened in your past. And while this may sound preferable to some, it isn't because the body stores the trauma in time orientation, i.e. the time it happened and you may still experience the trauma through symptoms like anxiety as you're remembering it and chest pain and uh, like a sick feeling in your stomach, panic attacks, obsessive thoughts, nightmares, or a constant feeling of something that something about you is off. And some of us do experience a continuous uh, continuous ruminating thoughts about the relationship or the toxic person. This is the brain trying to figure everything out, put all of the pieces together because we, we as humans, we, we recognize patterns even when they aren't there. And not only can you forget, you're not forget what happened, but your mind seems to obsess over every single detail. It's unpredictable what may trigger us after narcissistic abuse. And it our hypervigilance can cause major ongoing distress in our daily life. The prefrontal cortex. How does narcissistic abuse affect the prefrontal cortex? The prefrontal cortex essentially differentiates humans from other animals. It's the newest and most advanced part of the brain, and it is associated with planning, emotion, prediction, and other executive functions. Basically, the, free, the prefrontal uh, cortex helps us think, and the trauma from constant manipulative behaviors of the narcissist makes it very difficult to think clearly. And when they have us in that constant cycle of abuse, love bombing, devaluing, discarding, and also while gaslighting, triangulating us, smearing us, we feel overwhelmed. We feel constant pressure and we are, we feel we are under attack and we get distracted easily. We become overly emotional about ordinary events. As a result, our judgment can become impaired. We may feel more vulnerable and hence make impulsive decisions. We may become forgetful and scattered in the process. It can happen slowly. We might notice how much we've, we may, we may not notice how much we've changed until we become conscious of it. So the the brain and why we keep going back to the narcissist. And to me, this is the most interesting part. So you logically know that the narcissist is bad news, that they are no good for you, but going full, no contact, leaving the relationship or ending a marriage feels utterly impossible. And you are not exactly sure why. Is it the daunting fear of being alone, being single again, breaking up your family or is it is there excessive hoovering and confusing behavior wearing you down or are you weak-minded is it your fault could you have done better blaming yourself as it turns out the answer is not so straightforward trauma affects the brain in ways that seemingly work against us to recognize this impact we need to understand the how the following brain system works Okay, so there's something known as the HPA system, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. 
This modulates the brain and body connection. And when we experience stress from narcissistic abuse, our body releases hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. And this is a normal reaction. But if the HPA system is activated too frequently, it can result in adrenal fatigue and other physical manifestations. So when you're recovering from narcissistic abuse, you may feel extra run down and extra tired, physically sick, experience things like sinus infections, headaches, and body aches, and um, something known as the LCN system, better known as the attention-related system. These are hormones in the system that are responsible for giving us a sense of foreboding that something bad is about to happen. And after leaving the narcissist, this this system may become overstimulated and cause really bad panic and, and dread attacks and disassociation and depersonalization attacks. We want to feel safe, but we are absolutely terrified of what lies ahead. And may we worry about the narcissist sabotaging us, people believing us, the narcissist stalking and seeking revenge on us. So the social stress system, or this is oxytocin, commonly known as the love hormone, as many of us know. And this primarily runs in this system. And we feel oxytocin whenever we connect with another person. And women produce it in high amounts while in labor and breastfeeding. And oxytocin, oxytocin crash may occur during narcissistic abuse recovery. And we find ourselves missing and longing after the narcissist and our perceived love source. So are the, are the withdrawals that people talk about after narcissistic abuse real? And what is cognitive dissonance? The, the, the withdrawals, they are absolutely 100% real. The brain can trigger withdrawal symptoms that can feel just as real as any addiction withdrawal. And that's one of the reasons why narcissist, why it's so hard to leave a narcissist. And like a drug addiction recovery, it's common for people to experience a euphoric recall addiction after the relationship. Re euphoric recall, refer it refers to feeling flooded by all of the positive and happy parts of the relationship. And the memories can make us question why we ended things in the first place. They can send us right back to the narcissist who essentially becomes our drug dealer. And we experience, in most cases, cognitive dissonance, which has us believe two opposing thoughts at the same time. For example, we may logically know that the, the narcissist has despicable behaviors and does terrible things to us, but simultaneously we believe they have good intentions and don't mean to hurt us. And in the end, this cognitive dissonance works against us when we fall back into the relationship with the narcissist. So to, to uh, resolve these issues, we need to remind ourselves of the nature of the pathology of narcissism, the pathological part of the narcissistic person that protects them from their severe low self-esteem, so low self-worth, and their toxic shame. Believing they don't have a problem with no intention to change their behavior, not caring about how their actions or beliefs affect you, not wanting to make things better unless it benefits them, keeping you in their game for supply and their harem for supply, not caring about you at all or your feelings, you may need to remind yourself of these 100% absolute truths, maybe writing them down so when you are feeling emotional and missing the narcissist, you can refer to this list and engage in rational thinking. And yes, in reality, can be excruciating, especially if you are in love but loving a narcissist isn't true love unfortunately it's a distorted form of a trauma bond designed to keep you subservient and weak and filling the needs of a narcissist remember real love never hurts degrades or deteriorates you it isn't confusing leaving you uncertain and feeling unsafe in the relationship remember that wrongful actions and despicable behavior are louder than words when it comes to the narcissist my name is sarah ann brown and this is Narcissistic Abuse 101.